Once you've downloaded the boilerplate project that I set up for you, which has SteamVR installed as well as NormCore, we're going to go ahead and get NormCore set up uh, to be able to work within your multiplayer VR experience. The first thing you're going to need to do is to create an application key uh, from the NormCore site. So I'll switch over to the NormCore site. Once you've logged in, uh, you're going to go ahead and click on the Applications uh, link here and click on Add New Application. What you put in here for the name doesn't really matter, but it should be um, explaining to you what the application is. Because as you start to develop more using NormCore, uh, you're going to want to know which each key is for. So I was going to go ahead and uh, create um, class demo2, hit save. Uh, this app key that you see here is what's going to include inside Unity. So let's go ahead and select that, uh, right click and copy. We're going to go back into Unity now, and so this boilerplate uh, is basically set up the way that I demoed in class with all the assets that we need um, and SteamVR ready to go. You can see we've got our SteamVR player here, and we've got our teleporting script, but what we don't have is any of the norm core multiplayer components. So the first thing that we're going to do is add in the controller game object, which is basically the one that handles all the real-time communication. And if we take a look in our asset panel, uh, the easiest way to find it is just to search. Uh, we're going to go ahead and search for real time. And we want to include this real time uh, plus VR prefab. So drag it to your hierarchy. If we take a look at the inspector uh, with the real time VR player selected, a couple fields here I'll point out. So the app key, so that's what we created at the norm course site. So let's go ahead and paste that in. And then the room name. Uh, it doesn't matter what you put in here, um, and you could uh, be able to create multiple rooms and have like a lobby system. So the way NormCore works, as I mentioned in class, is it's all attached to the app key, but if you have different room names, whatever room name your particular application is looking for, that's where the players will join. So you could create uh, a lobby system that passes in variables for different room names, and since this is a public exposed variable within the Unity Inspector, we could override that through script. So for now, we'll just go ahead and just change this to demo class room. Doesn't matter what we put in here. I'm just going to go ahead and look, scroll down in the bottom half of the real-time um, script here. We see another script called real-time avatar manager. So there's two parts here. There's the local avatar prefab and then the local player. Uh, we'll come back to this local avatar prefab in a minute, but basically this is the prefab that gets instantiated or spawned into the world when a new player joins the room. Below here, the local player are, you can see, our fields looking for transforms. These are the fields that basically track the positional and rotation data uh, for your player. So we're going to go ahead and expand the player uh, SteamVR prefab and SteamVR objects. So we're going to go ahead and drop the player prefab into root. And then for the head, we're going to drop in the VR camera. And then obviously left hand and right hand uh, for those positions and rotation tracking there. So that's all wired up here, uh, ready to go. Let's just take a look at what the VR player IK prefab. This is default that comes with the system. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click on that. We can see it's highlighted in the assets panel. If I double click on that, we could see here the hierarchy structure here. So we've got um, within this, we've got our head, right hand, and left hand. And then within each of those groups are the actual geometries for the hands and the head. Now you can go ahead and create your own prefab from scratch, but I would suggest for simplicity that you just use this prefab because it's got the structure already that you need. One thing I want to also point out is if we take a look here. And obviously we could change the texture. If I wanted to change the texture for the head, I could. I could go ahead and click on the head. And uh, sorry, just click on that geometry there. And I could just change the actual um, texture that's applied to it. So I could get rid of um, these maps here. And change the color if I would like to. I would suggest using this, this prefab that's built in because it has the mesh ready for, for mouth movement and mouth animation. Now, all this is really doing is listening for the audio levels from the player. If there's noise, 
the mouth will move. If there isn't, the mouth won't move. But because it's all wired up, ready to go, I suggest using this VR player IK prefab. Okay, so now that we've got, I'll go back and select this. Now we've got um, our real-time controller in place. We dropped in the application key, changed our room name, and wired up our real-time avatar um, for the transformation. Now, if we were to go ahead and play this in VR, it would work. It's not quite ready for multiplayer. I mean, obviously, uh, the avatars are quite ready. Um, but the transformation uh, of other objects are not in place. Now, one thing I want to mention is if we go back and take a look at the VR player um, IK prefab, if we take a look at the hand model, if I just go ahead and hide the head for a second. Uh, we'll take a look at the hand. Uh, it's just kind of a mitten type uh, mesh uh, geometry. It, the default Steam VR um, hand that we know, the, the black and red glove with the kind of finger animation, doesn't get translated in uh, to this prefab. Now you could go ahead and actually add that in, but if remembering that anything that moves in norm core or in multiplayer, that, that transformation has to get synced back to uh, the data store uh, at the norm core server. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to suggest that you guys use a simple hand. You could create your own if you'd like, not use this one. Um, and if you want, you could look at some simple animations, like if they hold down a button, maybe the thumb goes up. Uh, but you want to kind of keep it limited, especially for the prototype. Uh, the prototype, I would suggest that you, which is your next assignment, that you just go ahead and use, you know, really simple meshes um, because it's going to simplify that process for you. All right, let's just go ahead and turn that the head back on there. All right, so if we go back. I think that's all that we need uh, to get our VR player ready to go. Um, there is a bit more that we're going to want to use that when we go to pick up objects, but that's all we'll do for this video. So the recap, we've dropped in our real-time player, our, our prefab, sorry. We've connected it to our app key, and we've wired up the real-time avatar. Uh, this local prefab is what's instantiated when the game begins and new players join. Uh, this local player is passing the transformation information uh, of each player back to um, the prefab that's instantiated. In the next video, I'll show you how to get it set up so that we get some objects that, that can interact and how we can actually um, have some interactions uh, in multiplayer using SteamVR and NormCore.